I was Teacher America 2007 New York City. I taught in East New York, Brooklyn, sixth grade math. It was great. The most powerful, incredible, humbling, uh, joyful thing I've ever done. Those students are the reason that I fight. Like they deserve to live in a better world than, than, than we have right now. They were a huge part of my life and continue uh, to be one of the main motivations for this fight. You first came to my attention with the article you wrote right after Ferguson. It was just a beautiful essay. And at that point, I don't think you had a ton of followers. How many people are now following the narrative as you're telling it? In terms of my Twitter followers, I have about 133,000. I always love Twitter because the cool thing about Twitter is that I don't need you to be ready. Right? I can just sort of like put it out there. And it's a platform that I try and use to amplify messages about the movement and like to allow other voices to rise and other stories to rise. And also I am processing the world too as, as I experience it. You've become really well known too with an interview you had on CNN with Wolf Blitzer. I actually got to see that at the time it was on before anyone commented and I thought, that, that's a game changer right there. I appreciate it. I think that people, you know, have an expectation about what blackness looks like, right? And what it means that black people come together. This idea that like when black people assemble, it must be criminal, right? And like no matter where it is, even when it's uncomfortable um, to say or when challenging people might not be the most popular thing to do. And I would like to believe that that is what I like, can do on platforms uh, like that. But I do think there's this there's this thing about like dehumanizing black people at every turn. And when you can explain away Garner saying, okay. I can't breathe 11 times, we, right? We see him literally being killed and somehow people can argue that that's not what's happening. And like, remember that these officers are making choices, right? They're choosing to do this and they're making the choices knowing that the system is gonna protect the choice, whatever it is, right? And that is doubly really, that's problematic. Does that surprise you? You know, it doesn't surprise me as much as it like, it disappoints me. It is a well-worn tradition here, right, in, in this America, that, that blackness is criminalized at every turn, right? In, in death, like, even when you are killed, it's like you must have done something wrong. Black children aren't allowed to be children in the context of white supremacy, right? See, that, that their childhood, that their innocence is then questioned, right? And they become these functioning adults, like Tamir Rice, right? He becomes a 12-year-old man suddenly. So like, I think that what's important about this moment is that we are all able to call it out and like force people to own their bias and their racism, like as it happens, right? Because there's a seductive um, lie that like racism only exists on, at the extremes. So we know that black lives matter. We say it because the response to it actually highlights the terror that we face every day. That people fight us when we say Black Lives Matter. That, that police are like actively trying to like squash the unrest when we come out and say like we are present and here.